Hi, my name is Meredith Nickerson and I'm the Instructional Technology Coach for Dexter Schools. The purpose of this video is to show you how you and your child can navigate the Everyday Math Online website, which has a bunch of great tools that you and your child can use. So I'm going to talk you through how you'd go ahead and get logged in, what the site looks like, and what are some of the features that are available to you at home. So the first thing that I want to share is a login card. Now teachers may send home a login card or a letter depending on how they have set up their class. This is a simplified login card. This is used more in our early elementary classes. If you're in upper elementary, you might get a letter instead. But here on this card, you'll see the name of our class. It'll have your student will have an icon or uh, if you're using simplified and their name. And then for younger students, we have pictorial passwords, which are super nice. If your child's in upper elementary, they might have an actual typed username and password. So check with your child's teacher about how they set up their class. But the most important thing is the web address. This is how we're going to get to the site. This is a school site. I know this is Cornerstone school site, but each school has its own. This is what we'll need to type into our web browser, whether it's uh, Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari or Firefox. This is the address we'll go ahead and enter. So I went ahead and entered that address and here I am on Cornerstone site. The first thing it'll ask you to do is to pick your class. So I see my test class right down here. And then I'll pick the student name and do my simplified login. Again, your child may have to do a, um, a typed login depending on how the class is set up. And then it will take me to kind of my book bag or what books I have and you're doing, this is everyday math for grades um, two. So I click on the book to get there. This is where I get to the portal. Now right now, it actually thinks I'm on the last lesson of the last day of school, which is um, fine. It's just the way my calendar's set up. If your teacher has their calendar up to date, when you first come here, you should see the day's lesson right here. If the timing's off, um, let your teacher know. They can readjust their calendar. But one of the things I can do also, if you notice down here, is I can go back lessons. So I can move backwards. There's lesson 9-11. Let's go to a regular lesson. So let's do 9-10 here. Um, by the way, you won't be able to jump ahead. Um, I, I'm going back in time, so that's why I can see ahead here, but I cannot go ahead because we want the kids to be on pace with what they're doing with their class. So again, if the timing's off, if the classes seem to be behind where your teacher is, talk with your teacher, they can fix that. So let's look here. I'm gonna go ahead and click. And this will actually show me all of the parts of the day's lessons. Now these ones that have um, magnifying lenses, these are activities they did in class so you might not find as much information there, but you can see the mental math practice they had, the math message, um, here's an activity they can do. Um, here's a link to their home link, so if um, they left their homework at school, um, they should have a link right to it where they can see these problems, and there should be a link to an actual page you can print up elsewhere, so I'll show you that in a moment. But let me go back a page go back to the home screen here. There we go. So I can go through all of these activities and these are also um, some extra activities that would um, might have been presented to your child based on kind of how they were doing in class. Math boxes, we compete or we um, complete those every day in our books. These are the problems where we um, go back and we look at other lessons and kind of um, revisit things we've been learning throughout the year. So that is all there, um, the whole lessons there. So if you need to review, if your child was out for the day, um, all the stuff that your teacher went through um, lives here, which is super nice. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my home, which is right up here. And let me show you some of the other features we have. My reference book, people often don't know about this. This is kind of the, it's not really a textbook that's attached to the program. It's, it really is a reference book. But when your child's working on a home link, you know, on their homework at home, on the problems, you might see a little book icon with a number. That is in reference to the reference book. So let's say I was working on a problem and it said that I could look on page, I'm just gonna make up a page here, like, I don't know, 34. What I can do is type in 34 down here and hit enter. And here is page 34, which should help me how to solve, uh, help me solve the problem. This is really great because a lot of the strategies we use with our students aren't the same way that we were taught math, so we might not necessarily understand, um, you know, what's going on in that problem. But if you use the reference book, you can see the strategy that was being used and um, help your child. Another really lovely feature is it will read this out loud to you. So let's see if this will work. Two-step number stories. So you can hear it read out loud. You can also, this is really cool. 
So if I click on this, it will actually show me the examples versus reading them. So I'm going to jump ahead here. So it'll actually show you how they solve this problem. There we go. So instead of just reading a page of a book, it will actually show you how this was solved. So I just think that's so powerful. All right, so I'm, I'm going to get out of my reference book here, but you can look through this. There will be um, supports for pretty much everything your child will be doing. Another thing is the e-toolkit. This is one of my favorites. Um, this is, you know, all those math tools that your child has at school, they don't necessarily go home with them all the time. Here, all those tools that they might have in their math classroom are accessible in a digital format. So you'll see I can pull out attribute blocks or, or counters or dominoes. Ask your child what kind of tools they were using in class. And if they're solving a problem, then they could actually pull out these, um, these tools and use them to help solve problems. There's also different, so I can, let's just do money here. So I can just pull out money and I can work out a money problem right here with kind of tangibles that are, are digital, right? The other thing is I can do different backgrounds. So there's graphing, there's geo boards, pretty much any math tool you would need to solve the problems in this program are available in a digital form here. So I really, really like this. Another um, factor, another thing we have, we have tutorial videos. Um, Geometry Sketchpad is really fun to play. We haven't had a lot of time to explore this yet, but you'll notice that we can practice with some of these um, activities. These are actual activities they can do online. The online games are phenomenal. Um, I always suggested to parents as a sixth grade math teacher when they would ask me, what are some extra practice that we can do at home? I would always say, play the games, play the games, because these are fun, they're engaging. Um, kids can play them by themselves, or you can play them as a two-player game, and they, they reinforce all of those skills that we're teaching in math. Now, notice on the top, it says select a grade level, so you can even start back to early childhood, but they go all the way up through grade six. I'll go to grade two here. And notice these are the one-player games they can play, and over here, these are ones where they would play against somebody else. There are also skill builder games. So these are like your basic, I, I used to call them kill and drill, you know, your multiplication tables, your math facts. Those, these, these focus on that. The challenge games, if you think your kid needs a little bit more of a challenge, um, you can click here. Also, keep in mind, you could always move up to the next grade and do the games there if you feel they need more of a challenge. Or if they need more support, you could always move back a grade level. So there's a lot of um, possibilities with these. And then, um, now the assignments, we're not recommending teachers, um, you know, assign things online. We're going to still go with papers coming home, um, just because we're not sure if everyone has access to this at home. Um, but one last thing I wanted to show you was everyday math at home. Notice that, um, here's, this explains everyday math. The literature list um, will give you a list of books, um, kids' books that tie in with what they're learning, which is a lovely connection between reading and writing and math. Today's home link, notice if I click on that. There's the homework. So unfortunately, we can't do that whole, my dog ate the homework anymore because here's a version. I can print it right from here. Um, this is the end of the year letter, but um, you can always find the homework online, which is lovely. And then um, there's also just some, I love these do anytime activities. You usually get them in a letter that comes home, but these are activities that you can do to support what they're doing in class. So here are some great activities. If you want to do some extra support at home, Please look at these, they're, they're lovely. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about this platform is that it is device agnostic, which means you can use this on your laptop, on your desktop, on your iPad, on your smartphone. Doesn't matter what device you're using, all of these features should work, which is really fantastic. Um, so this these are the everyday math tools. I just wanted to show you what's available for you and your child. I don't manage the account, so if um, the timing seems off on the lessons or, um, you know, you're not sure about that kind of thing, go ahead and contact your classroom teacher. Um, and I hope you find these tools to be useful. I think it's a nice site that they've put together. And I think that it's really helpful with our students when they're working on math outside of school.